Welcome to the Zen Stoic Path, where we share a modern take on timeless wisdom to help you develop unshakable inner peace so that you can live a liberated life. I'm your host, Victor Pierantoni, and the co-founder and head liberation coach. Be sure to follow me on social at victor.liberatedlife for daily content. Let's get into the show. In this episode, we're going to be discussing the three pillars of change. Now, the reason why we're discussing this, especially with this special series of the Zen Stoic rendition of the Eightfold Path called the Liberation Path, there are many people out there who believe change is difficult. There are many people out there who even believe that people cannot change or that change is impossible, that you are the way that you are and you're stuck as the person you are. Now, this is a really unfortunate thing to believe if it happens to be in your belief system, even if it's just a little bit, because change is actually just a process. And there are three pillars to change that actually allow us to make a change effectively in a noticeable way when it comes to the quality of our lives. Now, we're talking about the liberation path in the next series of episodes. And before we got into even the first part of the liberation path, I wanted to create this episode because this episode is all about the three pillars of change. When it comes to creating liberation in our lives, change must occur. If we're unable to change our current situation, then we remain trapped in the situation that inspired us to want to have a different life or a better quality of life in the first place. So when it came to the noble eightfold path, there were three aggregates to that path. There was wisdom, which included right view and right intention. There was conduct, which included right action, right speech, and right livelihood. And then there was meditation, which included right effort, right awareness, and right concentration. Now, these each of these aggregates has a different quality to it. The aggregate of wisdom is all about understanding, having a deeper understanding, widening our perspective of what's possible, and being mindful of our intentions for everything that we think, say, and do. The, th the second aggregate, the one of conduct, is all about morality. It's about how do we act in the world, interact with ourselves and others and the things that we choose to do with our time in a way that actively helps our path of liberation rather than conflicts with it. And then the third one, the aggregate of meditation, is all about awareness of ourselves, concentration, and the exertion of effort that we put into the focus that we have in life. So what's really interesting about this is that it correlates perfectly with what is called the three requisites for change in NLP. Now, you've heard me talking about NLP on some of the previous episodes. It's been something that I've been studying for years and very recently, I've taken a deep dive as I'm going the path of what is called an NLP trainer in which I'm able to teach and certify other people as NLP practitioners. Now, NLP is a really interesting study because it's basically like having the user manual for your brain. It is the study of excellent behavior, whereas typical psychology is, is a study of pathology, of other, in other words, what's wrong, psychologically speaking, whereas NLP is looking about what's right, and it's modeling off of the most successful people in history, and it is rooted in many different thinkers. So we combine this with Zen Buddhism and Stoic philosophy to create the wholeness that is Zen Stoic philosophy, the way of liberation. And the reason why this is such an important piece to discuss is because the three requisites for change are the clearing of negative emotions, the resolving of inner conflicts, the alignment of values, and the removal of limiting decisions. So that's the first requisite for change very similar to wisdom when it comes to the Noble Eightfold Path. The second requisite of change is taking action, not just clearing those things, but actually taking action that support and reinforce the changes and the lessons that were learned in the removal of those things that were blocking us from our past. And then the third requisite for change is focusing on what you want. Sounds very simple, but extremely important very similar to the aggregate of concentration. So with the Zen Stoic rendition, the way that we're looking at this is the three pillars of change. The first pillar of change is wisdom. Now, wisdom comes with an integral view, an ability to have a perspective on life, something that opens up the way that we see the world and the way that we see ourselves. It also includes being 
with intentionality, acting with intentionality, doing with intentionality, knowing what your intentions are moving forward. And your intentions are going to be regulated by the perspective that you have on life, which is why acquiring wisdom has a lot to do with clearing up the past and giving yourself the opportunity to clear away the old baggage, the old thoughts, the old beliefs, the old negative emotion that is compounded in our lives. Because with all of that still in our minds, in our psyches, it exists in our neurology, it exists in our nervous system, and we act through it unconsciously. So part of creating wisdom is not about creating wisdom from the external. It's not about listening to podcasts like this necessarily or reading a bunch of books or going to seminars. Wisdom, true wisdom comes from within. We are the greatest source of wisdom to ourselves. Nothing anybody can tell you is going to trump what you have within yourself, what you have within your own psyche, within your own emotions that exists unconsciously. So the first pillar of change is all about developing your internal wisdom. And this is an ongoing process. This is something that you'll do throughout your life and always expanding your view, always becoming more and more intentional about the things that you think, say, and do. So that is the first pillar of change. It's wisdom. The second pillar of change is action. Now, action, very much like the original Eightfold Path, is all about integral action in terms of how do you act in the world in a way that actively promotes your liberation? What is the right way to conduct yourself in the world that perpetuates your liberation rather than conflicts with it? So in that, we go into integral action. We go into integral speech. So how do you use your language? How do you use your words in a way that liberates you rather than traps you? Because if you listen to the episode about language, We talked a lot about how we actually trap ourselves through the words that we use every day. We cast spells on ourselves just by how we talk to ourselves, how we talk to others. And then finally, we talk about integral livelihood. So this is how are you making your living in the world? What is when it comes to your career and the way that you acquire resources to support yourself and those that you love? Are you doing it in a way that interferes with your liberation or are you doing it in a way that actively promotes your liberation, that perpetuates it, that allows you to accelerate your liberation? Are you doing work that puts you in a state of being that allows you to feel free? And so that is what the action part is, because it's all about what are we doing in the world? How are we being in the world? And the third pillar of change is focus. So focus is all about having integral awareness, so being aware of your own thoughts, And what you might notice is a lot of these have overlap, but integral awareness is about being aware of your emotions, being aware of your thoughts, being aware of the obstacles that maybe you've projected out onto your path or being aware of the lucky omens or the things that actually point you in the direction of the results that you want. Integral awareness is all about becoming a student of your results, being able to understand the communication between yourself and the external world. It's almost like getting a translation for the messages of the universe, you could say. And then we have integral effort, which has everything to do with how you're exerting yourself. How are you using your energy? Are you using your energy in a way that builds more energy or in a way that diminishes your energy? And then lastly, we go into integral concentration, which essentially is a form of meditative thinking. Now, meditative thinking is really key because it lines up really well with the third requisite for change that I was discussing earlier, which is this whole idea of focusing on what you want. Most of the time, the reason why people are not getting results or they're not able to change is because they're missing one of these three pillars. They either have not develop their own internal wisdom and learned from their past or cleaned up their past. And so they're still viewing their lives through the unresolved emotions or conflicts or events or even traumas that they've built throughout their lives. I've met people and this is myself included. This is not just, oh, like other people do this and not me. No, I've definitely done this. And a lot of my clients have done this, but we've we're, I've worked with clients where we discover that certain beliefs that they have about what they're capable of or what's possible for themselves are things that they decided when they were kids, when they're like three or four years old, that are they're still carrying into their 30s, 40s, and 50s. So part of having your own wisdom is discovering what is in you that's running you unconsciously and how do you clear that away. Most of the time when people have trouble making change, it's because they're still viewing the world with an outdated 
perspective on everything. They're viewing things through beliefs that they created when they were kids or emotions that are still unresolved from when they were children. No wonder change is so hard because they're so familiar with the old way of being. They're holding on to it. They're not letting it go. Or maybe they're missing the action piece. Maybe they're not taking action or they're being a dick to the people in their lives, right? Like that's, that's going to interfere with your liberation because you are going to take everything personally that you try to say to other people or that you try to do to other people. So if you're being unkind, if you're being disrespectful, if you're being mean, you're actually taking that personally within yourself and you will never be able to liberate yourself if that is how you're conducting yourself in the world. But also, people don't change the way that they're talking to themselves. They keep talking to themselves the same way that they did when they were anxious or depressed or angry. So if we don't change that, then change becomes virtually impossible because we're not taking the necessary actions that will influence the environment to start to change and start to become what we want. And lastly, one of the things that people miss the most, which it seems the most simple, but it is a profound pillar of change, is focus. If we are focusing on what we do not want, we will move in that direction. If our focus is even a little bit off, we will bring ourselves in a drastically different direction. If you think about when a plane leaves somewhere to you know, travel to another city, it, if that plane is even two degrees off of the course that it's supposed to be on, it will go five or 600 miles out of the way. And what we're doing with our thoughts and with our focus and what we put our attention on is we're doing the very same thing. If we don't focus on what we want, we will have adverse or distorted results. We'll have marginal results. We won't actually create the change that we want to create. And it's not just about doing one of these things. It's about doing all of them. It's about updating your belief system and the way that you view yourself, the way that you view the world, the way that you view people, updating how you treat yourself, the actions that you take, how you treat others, the maybe even the work that you do, making sure that you're putting yourself in a state of being that is one that promotes liberation. And lastly, it's focusing on what you want. Anytime you've ever felt fear or anxiety when there was an actual danger right in front of you, that fear and anxiety is completely psychological, which means it's, a, it's almost like a warning from your unconscious mind telling you that you are focused on what you don't want. And if you whatever you focus on, you will move towards. Whatever you focus on, you will feel. And that is the environment and the reality that you will create. So remember these three pillars of change. Number one, develop your own wisdom. Do this through journaling, through reflecting, through examining your own belief systems and clearing those away. That's exactly what we do in the liberation session. We clean up the past. It's, we accomplish a lifetime of therapy in a day because we look at very precisely the unprocessed emotions, the limiting beliefs that somebody has about themselves, the inner conflicts they have about themselves, the values that they espouse that maybe are completely out of date for who they want to be today. And we clear those out. We develop that person's own wisdom within themselves. The next thing is all about taking action, making sure that you act in the world in a way that is intentional, in a way that moves you towards what you want, not just acting in defense of trying to get rid of what you don't want. And lastly, it's about continuously having the practice of meditative thinking where you're focusing on what you want. And every time you fall off course, you know how to bring yourself right back. That is the whole process of meditation. That's why it's so important. The reason why it's so difficult for many people to change is because they miss one or more of these. So the Zen Stoic Liberation Path is us diving into each of these, each part of the liberation path and how to use it in your life to create a noticeable difference in how you act and how you treat yourself and how you treat others and how you view the world. That way you're able to continuously promote your liberation. You're continuously perpetuating your own power and growing through this. And that is what the liberation path is all about. It's about creating the change and freeing yourself just a little more each day. So stay tuned our next episode, we're going into integral view and how to expand your perception of yourself, the world, and others around you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It is my mission to help as many people as possible to live a liberated life with unshakable inner peace through the content on this podcast. Subscribe to this channel with notifications on to be notified daily whenever we share a new episode. 